Okay, so yesterday we, just, just to finish the discussion, so we have seen that the, the, the mass transfer of the neutrinos, okay, uh, we write them this way, so uh, we have this operator. of the sigma matrices uh, that uh, we write most for, uh, that give rise to uh, the phenom masses, masses. This square, and we've seen that D is okay, as uh, when we go to the basis where the charged electrons are diagonal, this matrix has this form U E M N S star uh, diagonal standard <coughs> and uh, and we have seen I okay, just discuss briefly how one measures the mass difference for these uh, these uh, neutrinos and also the mixing angle and and okay, we concluded showing that okay, this, this mixing angle are not really big for the one except one, which well, is not too small, it's, it's, it's point, point 0.15. So, compared to the city matrix, it's very different. And uh, we discussed about the neutrino uh, mass uh, difference. We have these two media <coughs> data, then times square atmospheric, which is uh, okay, just for completeness. 2.5 10 to minus p electron volt square and the uh, which is uh, I think right there. And, uh, and as I told you, we don't know exactly the structure of the spectrum because it could be inverted or, uh, or uh, normal. So we have 3 to 1 or 1 to 3, we will be speaking at the beginning or at the end of the spectrum, and we don't know the overall scale. I told you that there's for sure an upper power from the maximum value of the mass from the end point of the, of the beta decay spectrum. Um, in principle, the best way to directly access the neutrino masses, uh, if we really think that they are described by this effective operator, Whatever is the dynamics that generate this, uh, uh, would be the neutrino as double beta decay that was mentioned yesterday by, by the lecture after me, uh, which is indeed this type of process. Okay, we, we, we can have uh, some nuclei where there is a double weak interaction, okay, a little bit bigger. Where we have the, the, the emission of two. Uh, Electron. And so we have the two neutrino line that can close. Okay, so well, it's a it's a decay. Uh, so clearly, well, this is just a this other way that you have uh, okay, some, some nuclei with a uh, charge plus two that goes on some other nuclei with charge. Uh, Nuclear with the given charge, another nuclear with the charge minus two because we need the two electron. Uh, with this double transition, and uh, so these are two doubles, okay. And clearly, the process, the process cannot work because of this peculiar fact that we have this Majorana master. You understand, okay, I will not do any detail here in the calculation. You said that the process is extremely surprising because it's proportional here to this tiny capping, okay, which is associated with this possibly very big scale. So this process has not been observed yet, and, and this is what we put up and down to gain on the neutrino uh, mass matrix. Uh, well, here what we measure really is uh, the EE entry, okay, of the Majorana mass matrix. So, so this matrix, what we select is the component here in the interaction basis. Well, on that, we really have a significant bound, which is still is, is below electron volt now, it's around 0.1 electron volt, but uh, it's only that. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully uh, the, the experiments are improving, so we will know very, very soon if this sentence is, uh, is uh, different from zero. 
Okay. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the terminology is that you see that this mass splitting is of reactivity, okay? But they are not so uh, hierarchical because these are mass splitting squared, okay? So again, in a, in a good approximation, if just this goes like, uh, if we had a standard hierarchical spectrum, you would neglect the, the smallest eigenvalue, so you take the square root of 2 to get the estimate of the mass, so if I take the square root of these two, there is a, a, a hierarchy between two that less than the factor 10. So much less hierarchical than in the fourth and in the charge electron sector. So clearly, this neutrino sector looks not hierarchical at all, okay? with small difference in the, in the spectrum and big mixing energy. This is what data tells. Uh, what, what I want to discuss, uh, several things. <laughs> you remember, let's see if you, if you pay attention. Yes, a lecture, uh, by not my lecture, uh, Sandro mentioned that I mean, it's very nice to put all the fermions of the southern modeling in representation of some gradient type groups. And this is a very, like, maybe it's also the biggest insight towards the new unification. Not too much because of the numerical unification of the grid column, but the fact that the quantum numbers really fit in this very simple uh, picture. So, in, okay, you can have look at it. In this S of 10 model, there is this fundamental, if, if you put the spinner in the fundamental presentation of S of 10, there are 16 components, okay? And these 16 components correspond exactly to the 15 standard model fermions. I hope you did the exercise, you can't really, all the fermions we introduce are 15, plus the platinum. Okay, then he mentioned that, actually, well, this is also really a very good insight of unification, is the fact that these fermions should be, cannot be split in mass, okay? Because otherwise we have a problem with anomalies. And you also give you some clue how to check that. Have you, have you checked that? <laughs> it's not a really trivial exercise, so don't be. But did you anybody try it? Try to lift only some of the of the fermions in the in the generation. In the yeah, in a, in a given frame. Okay, I knew that not the <laughs> But okay, so let me so that was the the thing that it's true that indeed if you lift some of them you generate a problem with the so if you if you have an incomplete multiple you generate a problem with anomalies. However, I told you that the Neutrino are likely to be very heavy. Remember how this fits. Well it fits with the fact that the neutrinos are the only ones which are totally <coughs> neutral under the standard model. So if I'm only interested in <coughs> terms here of this type, okay? Well, these are standard model light, okay? Gauge field, W, Z, so all the, the standard model gauge field, I can push up the attendant things, and that's not a problem. If you are eliminating the attendant things from, from a, a multiple of X of SO10, I create anomalies only for currents of SO10 which, however, are not related to the current that we see at right point. Okay? So I said this fits well to the fact that okay, they for the same argument I mentioned yesterday, that they don't use can be heads because they are totally uncharged from the point of view of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the standard model H group. So, then not a surprise that out of these 16, we have only 25 these out of the 16, we only identify the 15 that correspond to the standard model fits. So it was another way even more. To say the, the, fact that, the fact that if I add the retinotinus, I complete the multiplet is an argument in favor of retinotinus. And the fact that this is neutral is an argument in favor of the fact that, okay, I can push it up. Okay. <coughs> Fine. And so, let's now really start to go beyond the standard model. Why, actually, we already add the standard model. I introduced this operator. Uh, but now let's try to do it more systematically. Again, connected to what was discussed this morning. So, so our idea is that the standard model is an effective theory. Okay? It's an effective theory like uh, 
the effective sphere discussed before are very good because we integrate out some degrees of freedom, so we are probably more complicated theory we can Sorry, maybe. Um, I, I, I'm not sure about this, but in general, don't they talk, uh, isn't it general to talk about at least two uh, right handed neutrinos? Or, or oh, sure, sure. Actually, I, I uh, give it for granted that there are three, because uh, when, uh, when I. Ah, okay. But yes, ah, yeah, there yeah. are. Ah, okay. And what should be uh, been okay. sloppy? The, the, the exercise I did was introducing just three, but I'm going to use exactly like a ah, model okay. Okay. to write a Yukawa okay. exactly okay. like this. Good question. Good question. Okay. So, the idea is that we have an effective theory out of which we. Yeah, please, sorry. But these are the short fragments were much more massive, that's the right hand of the neutrinos. What would you observe? What would the view observe? Like an effective violation of the HBI and so on. I mean, if the yeah, yeah, I mean, if I, if you, if you try to push up, let's say, only some of the works of the SNA model, you generate anomalies. Okay, that is, you break the word identities of the gauge group, and so you should expect the yeah, violation of gauge invariance. So the current that you expected to be conserved is not conserved anymore. Okay, so really, at the quantum level, the current is not conserved. So actually, the precise calculation for the same. G minus two, or I mean, any calculation where you involve the gauge field that you have done, assuming the conservation of the invariant, at some point breaks down. Okay? So you should expect a big deviation. Actually, even really the consistency of the theory breaks down, because the theory becomes, uh, in the sense, not normal. So you, expect, you should expect to falsify the precision test of, of the model. Okay? Really, but just the, this little one, the standard normalizability of the model, the way you learn. Okay, is based on the assumption that these currents are conserved. Conserved also at the quantum level. Okay, so you break the, the word identity. So in sense you can then if you break these word identities, you can write a series of other operators, even at dimension four, which are by the by. They are not forbidden. But the uh, result would be consistent because the I let's say we have all the time. Yes. Well that maybe can be a, an effective theory again. Okay? So it's it, uh, to be inconsistent is a question of, of, uh, of definition, but certainly you should see some deviation from, from the standard model, okay? Because of the breaking of the uh, Okay, so, we think theory is it's an effective theory, the theory of everything, okay? Well, what, 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 what we measure is an effective theory, is an effective theory of this form. Okay, it is Okay, that 
The standard model has only one radical operator in the infrared, that there is a series of massive operators, uh, it's not an operator, and then there is some element of operator. So this is an element operator, and uh, in this operator, this is a master, for the Higgs is not protected by any symmetry, and should we discuss this in the course of supersymmetry. And so, in a natural effective theory, you would expect this to be of the order of, of the top. Why? For instance, let me just did the, the exercise, uh, the simple exercise of adding the latent neutrino explicit. Okay, if I add the latent neutrino explicit and I compute the correction to the Higgs master, <coughs> I have the diagram this time, so it's a cup in between the standard. So I have included the, the new right. The new right has a mass, okay? Actually, I have to insert the mass twice. To, to close the diagram here. If you do the calculation, you find the correction, the final correction to the Higgs mass. But clearly, there is a, there is a quadratic divergence, but okay. But there is a final correction to the Higgs mass, which is okay. y. If you square this, you have a copy. If this and is very big, it's a potential big, big uh, disturbance of, of, of the initial value of the X mass. Of course, I can tune okay, the, the value of the X mass at, 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 at the heavy scale such that finally there is an initial value and there is this big quadratic correction. Finally, what I get at large is this new wishes of the order of one GB. But this we don't like, it's really a tuning of several order of magnitude. This is why we think that. Uh, there must be something that protects this guy here from receiving the correction. This is, maybe this is, uh, unfortunately, it's not a, a theorem, because I can still have this tuning. So, but it's a consistency of, of the effective theorem. So this is a big question. This, this is the only real strong motivation to expect with this is uh, around the corner. Around this scale that we know is of the order of, and is the weak scale. Okay? But it's, it's a power of power because I mean, all the other effective theory that we've, that we've seen, those, for instance, the character contribution theory that I didn't discuss, but those amount discussed today by, by, by Sandro in a certain sense, and with all the other effective theory that we know, the mass and the relevant operator either are forbidden, these are the nice theory, or if they are not forbidden, they should be associated to the, to the scale, to the cutoff scale. So how we can, how we can uh, uh, deal with the fact of having radian neutrinos? Well, you see, radian neutrinos are, are, are special because radian neutrinos, uh, and this operator here, violate one of the symmetries that we have here, one of the global symmetries, okay? Because you see, this operator violates Break one of the global symmetry introduced in the first lecture that is the total vector number because there are two fields scattered. While here, on the other hand, even including the UCAVA, vector number is fully preserved. Okay, so this is here, there is this is a global symmetry okay, it's preserved. So one can say, well, okay, I understand why this scale is so heavy because it's the scale where vector number gets broken, so it's a very heavy scale. Then the dynamics that protect the Higgs uh, is something that has nothing to do with that number. For example, there can be supersymmetry, in supersymmetry, this must have is, is forbidden, or there can be some dynamics, so in, in the, some, the Higgs is a composite particle, so if it is a composite particle, I cannot extrapolate this diagram out of the area energy, because then at some point there is new dynamics that here that cut off and, and screen the Higgs from being sensitive to the present energy. Okay. So, what's the moral? Well, the idea that we have in mind is that there are different scales in the theory, and this is fine provided the scales are associated to breaking, breaking of this, so if the scales are separated by symmetries. Okay? So, for instance, there is this, that we call it for simplicity, M i, but this is the scale where the vector number is broken. Fine. So, if I take M i to infinity, I record, I get a symmetry in the theory, this lepton number. So it's fine to have this, this 
Ciao, mi stai scopo, non sei stato dietro una prossima simmetria. Faccio tutto su chiesa, la prossima simmetria. Basta, basta, io sono stato in un dynamics, la prima volta, cioè, io ero già su un lambda, e mi dice un lambda, sono venuto in un dynamics, e fin qua di forse un pizzi di poco. Lambda, le tue prossime simmetrie, that is the one that protect the fixed mass term, and this one has to be not too far from the TV scheme. Okay. So, This is nice because it's there, okay, if you are really looking at process where lepton number is, uh, is violated, you have to, for sure, to pass to this very heavy state, and so, okay, you can see only in specific observer, but now here, we can go here and look if there are organisms which do not violate lepton number, because there, this other scale can appear, okay. So, there is hope that, in this case, actually, effects are much more, much bigger, if you want, or for less surpassed, Then this one here, if however we look at process which do not violate the tonal, which actually are also the process we are interested in. Okay? This is the idea that we have. And so let's look, okay, let's give a first look to, to this operator here. So let's first give a look to operator which are really respecting all the standard model symmetries. For instance, I can look here. I can write an operator of the type. The power, maybe this is dimension 6 of the reader. I can write a book of 20 consider of the reader. Like. <coughs> so, for the moment, that's not fair yet. And then. There was another way, there's the one for example that was discussed this morning, again, uh, keep uh, this different mass of uh, W and Z. You know, remember? So that was the operator we started in new page where we have the cow, metric, and square, and so on. Well, actually, this is, a, in a sense, it's already an operator that breaks uh, some accidental symmetry that we have here. It breaks a symmetry that we have in the limit of. Uh, of uh, of uh, the limit where we put G prime to C, so this accidental possibility. But this are going to be more and more safe, except because they don't break any symmetry even. And if you look at the bounds on the scale of this operator, more fine, so people are trying a lot of revision, the digital analysis. And the bounds on the scale here are typically of few. Maybe in some, some cases, Maybe it's 5, 6, in some cases it's 1, 2. So that's nice. So we do not rule out yet new physics at a relative scale, as of here yeah, it's not using a relative scale, that preserve the sum of the series. Okay. And of course, I mean here, okay, this is clearly start to be there start to be some tension between this QTV and the fact that here we have 100 GV, but okay, if the QT reference is weakly interacting, then the effect appears at one loop. So you remember when I formally showed you before with the attendant mass that was a 16 plus square suppression. So this is still available for QTV, it's not a terrible problem. Okay. Now, what, what I said all this? Well, because now what I want to do is to look what happens in the Plato sector, which is the subject of our picture. And the second level of sector is really a bit clear. So the level of sector of where we conserve the symmetries which are uh, which, uh, 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 number by number. But here we have all the list of uh, operators that we have seen and already generated in the standard model, like, uh, for example, this one. This list of various uh, lists of dimension 6 operators. This is flavor, it's, it's tricky because what, what could say? I can switch to zero the coupling of this operator if there is an exact level C. Okay. However, then we cannot do that because we know that there is not an exact level symmetry. The level symmetry here is broken by the current charge. Okay. So we have to be careful. Okay. And clearly the idea, which is very simple. This is also why I insist in the first rest about the flip of symmetries in the limit when we switch off the intervacabra. Clearly, you will see, and that was already mentioned, the bound of this operator are quite 
severe. However, they are related to some breaking of the flavorsivity. Here also we have breaking of flavorsivity in the Yukawa sector. In this case also we find that some strange pattern that some masses are very small and so on. So clearly, all the issue of flavorsivity, at least if we take this uh, brute force approach to flavorsivity, is an issue of how we break the flavorsivity. Okay, this is the Okay, so before this present, let's now start with the looking at the composite bodies of radar and, and the bounds that we can put on there. Okay. Let me. The base here. Yeah, so then here, okay, we have this. The effective theory part we are interested in is just the sum of two sheets and divided by scale and we have some dimension 6 operator. And let me start with this sector which is particularly simple, that is the sector of the operator contributed to measure and dimension mixing. But again, we have already seen the, the sum of all scale. So remember in the standard model we have seen that there was only one effective operator generated after integrating out the W, that was this operator here. I can write it in, in general terms. Remember that we generate only this operator. And actually, in the standard model, we compute some of the effective coupling of this operator at the electrical scale just integrating out the tau and, and the w, and we find that in the standard model, we have a coupling that is y top square, I can write this generic form, bt i, bt j square, so you remember this was b, dt b, bt s, if here was b s or b d, and so on, this generic form divided by 16 pi square, and then there was some correction over the one, okay? But that's really not very important. Now what happens here, well, if now we go to the other standard model, what can happen is that the standard model modify this initial condition, okay? So, I should consider this plus something else generated by the SM. But I can also generate other operators. I think somebody asked me that uh, in the, one of the first lectures. So, for instance, I can generate operator of the type Q bar left, D right, D right, Q left. Like square. Because well, I generate it only at the level of dimension 8, because then I have to compensate with 2 field. And then I can also generate uh, something like uh, the right, capital D, the right, that's right, G square. Mm -hmm. Remember the idea of effective field that we write all the operators allowed by the symmetries, okay? because this is what you generate. Now, in this case, uh, we don't know which is the underlying symmetry, we just write down all the operator compatible with it. The only thing we want to protect is the standard model H symmetry. So all these operators are allowed. Actually, these operators are present also in the standard model. But when I integrated out W, I didn't put them because this you generate only with coupling suppressed by the Yukawa coupling of the W. So they are so small that I neglect them. And again here. Because we did the calculation the limit of neglect and light for masses. So these operators are there in the standard model, but they are very suppressed. So, what happens? Okay, now it's a trivial exercise to see what, uh, uh, what happens if we add uh, these extra things here. Sorry. You should interrupt me when I do, especially when I do mistakes. So here clearly there is a, just a dimensional part where there is something missing, so this is the scale. But uh, before doing the uh, calculation, just a trivial. Let me open a parenthesis on the uh, 
matrix element of this type of operator. Which I realized this year, maybe I should have done it in some previous lectures, but I forgot. So you remember that when we discuss and we generate an effective theory, we said, well, then the amplitude <laughs> is, what it is? It's the sum of the mu times the matrix element, the sum of the initial state. And I told you this is the tough part because the bit is where well. the imperturbable QCD and because we have to take the matrix element of something which has quarks between atoms. Okay. But I also show you one example where we can do that uh, precisely that was the case of the vector current for the heavy port in the heavy port field. At least that was the case. So let me now open a, 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 a parenthesis on the general specification of this operator, which I think is useful to. So this is a big parenthesis. Now, standard law of physics. <coughs> so which are the operators that we encounter physically? Well, let's start from the, the simple one, which I believe the, the, the one that we discuss, like this one. Or actually, let me consider this specifically in the case of the center scalar medium because it's really huge having omega b prime. This was the one that we discussed yesterday. And this, okay, just by Lorentz invariance, you know that it has to be decomposed in this form that can be at most to compaction at most. When these are two heavy mesons, we understand this matrix element in a specific kinematical means that was the limit to be equal to B prime. Okay? So we've got the, at least there is a kinematical point where we find the conserved current and we, we, we determine precisely this matrix element. And this is always the case. Actually, uh, <coughs> these are basically, well, it's always the case for any heavy or light light, uh, light, light system, because in one case, the heavy port system will have a conserved current in the limit B equal to B prime. In the, in the light port system, for instance, here by the chaos and the pines, we can go to another limit that is the limit of zero mass of the force, and then we have a Q square cluster that is very small, and so we have a conserved current at Q square equal zero, and that is really just the, the electromagnetic current. Okay? So this then is connected to the conservation of the electric charge that tells us that. F plus of zero is one plus correction of with the, with the, with the masses of the light poles. So S squared divided by well in principle the correction could be linear, I want to demonstrate that the correction are quadratic and are even quadratic and are even proportional to the mass difference. So really very tiny correction. And the same was happening here. Although it's a completely different kinematical point, okay? So I want to stress the principle is the same. So the fact that with the vector current, we can always associate it with a conserved current, but this is in a very difficult, very different kinematical regime for the heavy point of the right motion. Then, of course, finally, if we want to estimate systematically the correction, we want to really make a simple physics, we have to simulate this matrix element on, on a lattice, in lattice to so we really have to do a loop to the calculation of the elements on, on a lattice and so on. But we can do that uh, with very good accuracy because we already know a symmetric point where we know exactly the, the result. So we have to estimate only the, the size of the correction. So this correction parametrically it's, it's very small. So even if I compute the coefficient with 30% uncertainty, this is at the end is a less than 1% correction to to the full matrix element. This way, for instance, we have this very precise determination of UX and so on, because they are all determined by this type of matrix element. So this is the easy case. Another relatively easy case is the case of axial patterns. Okay. Very basic uh, stuff, okay? But if you are bored, then 
but I thought that if you have even seen it at least one time, you have to see it because it's a uh, simple. Well, this, well, of course, you can say that here I cannot have an axial current because it's zero just by 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 pi. It's zero here. I cannot have an axial current which is a scalar based on this vacuum. And here, just by logarithmic, I have this. Okay. And now, this is a totally number two bond object. Okay. F pi, which is called the Mason degree constant, which is something called the non-exhibitive. I cannot do it. Interesting, if we go now to the limit where this, this is true for all mesons, okay? From the B meson to the, to the pions. If we go to the limit where we consider the pions, uh, that this actually is connected to what was discussed this morning, you see the pions are the constant bosons of the of QCD in the limit where we neglect the, the lack of masses. And actually, this is really related to this spontaneous breakdown of, of the color symmetry for the, for the, for the pion. And if we compute, if you compute the double mass okay, in the limit uh, using this theory that was mentioned today by, by Sondru, where in the alien world where there is no uh, fixed mechanism, but, the, but there is a spontaneous mechanism because of, because of the uh, QCD, okay, you get the mass of, of the W is at pi, exactly this, G divided by root of 2. So if you want or if you want, in other, in other words, actually, this F pi is an example that we measure from, from the from, from measure of the cost of from the pi in the case. And if you want, there is a contribution to the to the W mass, which is square, which is in the which is of this side. It's pi, but there is, it's there. Said in other words, actually, the, this again, I, I like to make the connection to what was discussed this morning. The W that we see up left is a mixture okay, of the original state of the GP. It's a mixture of something that gets mass from the ghost of the big sector and something that gets mass here. So there is a time. The mixing goes like this at, at I, which is. Uh, 130 MeV and uh, 250 GB, so it's very, very tiny, but it's this thing. Okay, so you get this, no way, either you measure it or, uh, but it, it's certainly easy to measure. For instance, if you determine this again, you know, US, so it's US from this process, then if you look at the final decay, you know that the coming here is, is US and the GPT, so you can determine this experiment. But again, you can determine from the lattice, it's, it's, it's very easy to determine from the lattice, because it's a simple mass exception. Now, what I, why I'm using this? Because I want to discuss also another type of an experiment, the type of an experiment of pseudo scalar pattern. So, like now, contract this with the, so let me take Q times this mass accelerant. <coughs> right here, sorry, there should have been two. These are different flavors, because genetically, this is the This is an external based on weight of this two points. Well, what it is this? Okay, just by construction is F and E is square, which for a non-term method is just the measure mass. Okay. Now consider now the case where this is a heavy state, like the B measure. You remember that we discussed that. Uh, Heavy state, so the heavy port is almost at rest, so I can use the equation of motion on the heavy port mass. And so what I get here, well, then this PMU, you know, it's roughly the difference of the momenta of the port inside the headlines. For a heavy state, I can neglect the mass, the, the, the momenta of, of the light state. And so what I get here is so if this is the only, only the heavy uh, the only heavy four, and then I use the equation of motion, so I get, I get, so I get 
you can write them this way. So we have two patterns, okay, which both have the quantum number to annihilate the, 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 the object. So actually, here, sorry, this is really between two. Dimension and dimension. These are the two axes of that I can see. This is. Then I have this times itself. Let's do it. Let's step one away. Okay? Nothing. Just a trivial algebra. But uh, what we can do here is not only the thing, and to insert a complete set of things. Okay? Still. Nothing new. And then the approximation that what we do, very good for approximation, is to replace this sum just with the vacuum. Okay, this is what is called the vacuum in such approximation. In the old days where uh, that distribution was not good, uh, we had to do something, and so this is what was the best thing to do. Okay. And uh, I speak myself because yes, I still put any area where that distribution is not better. Now it's <laughs> that's what you need to do that. But uh, actually, this is not only a relatively good approximation. Indeed, actually, if what is done on the lattice is to simulate this matrix element divided by the value you get put in here, the value insertion, and one find what the one correction. No. So the size you get is, is important. So the size. And so, for instance, this is why I did all that, because now when we want to evaluate this type of matrix element, so this one is the same thing we have in the standard model. This one, when we go to, to a light core system, okay, we will have matrix element between, say, ions and the pattern of this left right operator, which is the one in the net cell. This is important, so there the matrix element is much bigger by factor 100, because I get twice this type of effect. Okay, but I think it's, it's good to know that this is here. If this type of analysis gives you really the, the right size of, of, of the matrix element. And finally, okay, still, these are all the easy type of matrix elements in the sense that are easy because we have at most one hit in one state and the initial state and one hit in the final state. So these are the things that I want to tell you you can do really on lattice. So in the future, for sure, the ultimate, yes. Can I just ask, when you put the pseudo scalar problem between back to you and yes. the is that not the definition of FP? Is it not normally multiplied by some product? So, 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 so this is the definition of FP, okay? Between the pseudo so scalar and the, Yes, this is the definition of FP. <coughs> but, so, but not, not for the not for the scalar, but for the, the yeah. axiom. Is it FP? Okay. It's uh, yeah, so, 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 so this is really the definition of FP. So the definition of the matrix seven of the axis happened. Between the vacuum and the subscalar method. Okay. Uh, of course, it's a definition, then you, 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 can, you can measure it and so on. But it's it. And I don't know if your question is related to the fact that uh, these can be defined because you need in a more abstract way, even without looking at the matrix cell between the vacuum and the value. No, I think I'm just confused between the actual and so this, this is the axial pattern and this is the, the, the set of scalar, basically. Okay. Okay, uh, what I want to say, okay, so, yeah, this one I said that including this one, okay, and are all easy because we can we have at most one thing in the past state, so this is, these are the things for which the lattice is becoming more and more design, so we don't have to be more. On the other hand, the, class, the other class of matrix elements that, for which we really have difficulties are those of the type M1, M2, whatever. And here we have problem for any type of Operator, even including the current, because what happens is that we have two headers in the final state, and so we have uh, 
a scattering effect. And so we have the fact that you see, it's it's really not well defined. This one state from the quantum two, it's not just a, a, a one particle state. Eh? So it's difficult to simulate it on the lattice. And you, you understand what happened because now if I just do the trick I did before in setting the uh, so you just rewrite this as That is the difficult because here now when we have two particles of resonances play an important hadronic resonance play an important role. While they don't contribute, at least they are they have to be of shell to contribute to a single hydro state. So being of shell is something that is not dangerous. It's just a, a something that we can end up here, they can be on shell. But when they can be on shell, uh, it's complicated. But really this is if the, the particle of the example that goes on shell is an example that propagate, propagate at long distances, so this is why it's is very difficult to simulate it on the lattice, is related to the relation between the field and the space time, so it's very tough. Okay. And for the error, still, uh, it's a long way to go. Okay. Uh, I wanted to mention that it was, was important. Okay, so let's now go back to our problem. So this was. I close the big parenthesis of the matrix set. We want to know which type of bound we put on that effectively. So let me start with the, the case where I just considered this one, which is the simple one. So I am going to have a standard bound contribution. With another one, which I have no knowledge, it's clear to keep in mind. And then I will ask this extra coefficient from, so we got this will be the coefficient of the ij left left. So it's really, I call ij left left this operator. So if I take this theory, okay, in addition to the fact given by the integrating out w and the, and the top in the standard model. Okay, so I have the full theory, where So, W and the X-ray is of freedom. The X-ray is of freedom, I integrate them out and generate this. Then I integrate out also top and W, and finally I generate at the scale below, W top, this. So, this piece, which directly comes from integrating out W top, plus this, which is a, was there from the beginning. Okay, it was an initial condition, a three-level initial condition for this operator. So you see, again, this is connected to what I, I discussed on this matching procedure. So here, in the standard model, there was no, there was zero three level uh, initial condition for this operator. Why if we do that? We have it. Okay. So this is not anymore. It's not just uh, integrating out top and down, going down to lower energy. Then we can really want to go down to the energy of the master. So we start all the machinery, compute the analog dimension of this operator, as we already did, and that's exactly as in the standard model. So we don't need to, to repeat that proposition. And now we have finally want to always the amplitude. What it means? Well, <clears throat> uh, it's clear that will be the standard model result, the standard model, times, okay, this piece where I factorize the sum model will be 1 plus e per 3 and the square, and then yeah, 16 y square, d square divided by y top square, d square, so this is the easy case, okay, because I can factorize everything, it's exactly like the sum model, so the infrared run is exactly the same as another model. It just modifies the initial condition and there is a multiplication which is multiplicative, so it's three. Now we look at the data, and then data tell us, for instance, we look at the universe and so on, that we don't see a big deviation from the standard model. Actually, experimentally, roughly speaking, we find that A and M bar divided by A standard model is smaller than N20%. We just 
Let me just put this map, you know, okay, which is well, the experimental precision which will determine the mass difference of okay, and so on. Okay, so what I did use is that what I did use is that uh, uh, sorry, it's this minus one, okay, it's smaller actually. Some model takes the data and will give you the same model. Okay, so what I did use is that this has to be smaller than that, you know, okay? So, so let me call this a uh, lambda standard model. Okay, because clearly this if you want is because the effective scale appearing in the standard model just by figuring out the heavy equation. So lambda standard model is so transform the square, so lambda standard model is 4 pi to b, that is about 230. Okay. So this is it's a very important scale, keep it in mind that it enters several times. It's just the standard loop scale in the standard model, expressed as a dynamical scale. So, <coughs> we let the standard, standard model divided by standard square quite often. In first approximation, it's, it's one, so I'm not really doing a precise calculation, but it's clear that we are not doing really bad precise calculation. It's easy. Has to be more relation, or if you want that our lambda has to be bigger than uh, <coughs> so you take the square root of square root of so lambda has to be bigger than lambda standard model uh, divided by this. Thank you. 
So clearly, this is this is what is some, sometimes called the new physics flavor puzzle, okay? because, because we would like to have new physics at the TV scale, and from flavor perception, we find this very big puzzle. But what I told you at the beginning, you already guess which is the, the way out, no? because the way out is trying to be careful about how we break the flavor symmetry in the general summary. However, it's a tricky game because we have to break it anyway, otherwise we don't generate the power cap. Because, so, in the summer model, we have this power cap. Indeed, at the end, there are, there are two puzzles in general terms, which were, and this is this part, and what they do the same also for, I, I did this exercise, which is really simple for the set of two, but what they do the same for the case, like the case, the case, and so on, the situation is similar. So, this is the New physics flavor plasma because it's related to the fact that violation of flavor symmetry in higher dimensional operator allows new physics that seems to be very successful. The other puzzle is the part that we find that this is a little company and it is very good to extract, very good articles of the fact that N R is much smaller than N Chan is much smaller than or the part of the So clearly, so this part is called the level puzzle. So why we have entries which are much smaller than one in the car? So the fact that if you want this, the, the, the corresponding you have entries is five times minus five, okay? But here, the entries is equal to one. Here. Other things. So clearly the idea is that the two things are somehow connected, okay? So the fact that so if we break the flavor symmetry in a clever way such that we generate small entries for the light drop masses and also for this dangerous operator, we somehow solve the problem. It's not easy, but that is the idea. Yes. Um, just a question to why we get lost in the process. Uh, where are the measurements that uh, if you uh, to a high precision, the, the, the CKM, so you don't mix them with the physics. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is okay. Well, it was, was discussed in the first lecture, maybe we haven't gone too far. So, the CKM, the CKM is measured, okay, all the size of the elements are measured precisely from this single quantity. Okay. So, okay, let's open this parenthesis because it's important. So, U, B, D, U, S, The size of all these, you remember, so the modules of this guy, I can only determine from some decays of the factors. B going to this case, B going to D, that's you know, because at the three level, the consumer model contribution is proportional to this then I use my effective theory that allows me to compute exactly my amplitude B to D. So the amplitude for this one is in the standard model, okay, so it's this is D. And then there's some Fermi and so on, I do the calculation. Three elements, it's easy. Then there's the matrix element between the D and the D and the matrix element with the time point current. This, I know it because of the So I can do this precise calculation, I do the experiment, I measure this, and then I determine this from the data and the models. Okay. Then, once I determine this from the model, it's, uh, <coughs> if I impose unitarity, I get all the model. I impose unitarity, it's a standard model, this is unitary matrix. The only thing I, I miss is the phase. Okay? But actually, in the first lecture we discussed, okay, the phase we can measure it from we are mixing and so on. That's too, that would be a dangerous thing because if there is two phases, then you don't, cannot apply it. That's a very good point. Indeed, however, fortunately, there is another way to measure the phase which is not involved we are mixing. And this is to look at some interference between the level amplitude. Maybe I didn't discuss that. It involves some, it involves some D to D uh, non electronic case, but there is a, okay, I'm not sure that can be that. Okay, maybe for me, maybe for one, we were discussing discuss it in the, in the, maybe in the last lecture, I will do some phenomenological things. But so there is a way to determine the difference <laughs> okay, just because it's the interference of different three level uh, amplitude. Okay. 
So there's a way to close the system. Okay, to measure everything from three level process and then use the mixing amplitude here to pin down or to put bounds on that guy. Not that anyway, for instance, I didn't forget about the physics because if I just measure this, okay, we put not those bounds on the model. If I look at B by mixing the mass difference, the mass difference is proportional to the model. The model to so it's not a it's really a three system, it's not there's no but it's a it's a good point. But indeed, a few years ago still there was possibility that maybe maybe uh, there was a shift. So maybe the, the value we thought about the, the phase was contaminated by the phase, but now this is unfortunately. Okay. Um, okay. So let's now uh, let me think what I have to say. So to be clear, for the message is either in physics is heavy, yeah, it's a possibility that we cannot exclude, the, unfortunately, or maybe the breaking of the fluid symmetry, so the breaking of this S three to the fluid symmetry in the standard model and in physics are somehow linked. Such that uh, they give rise to suppression of hypermass and also suppression of the of They are different operators, so this is why it's got video. Okay. And I will, I will now illustrate why I'm thinking. Let me also comment on the, the lepton sector briefly. Of course, also in the lepton sector, you have exactly the same problem. Okay. Because in the lepton sector, the observable one can look, for instance, is due to gamma. And we don't have mixing, we don't have the meso mixing analog, but we have rare case. For this operator, for instance, here we can write an, an effective operator with like L bar. This is the analog of, of P2S gamma. And we need a little field to compensate, and then we have everything new. Okay, so we have the same problem. And this is such that there is a there is an upper limit to the branch limit that we don't tend to the minus something, something and the minus 13. Okay. So if I put here 1 over lambda square, the bar that I'll get is lambda O again, the bar. Which is so very, very consistent in a sense. And in fact, I think the case is obvious that okay, this operator one could iterate in principle one loop in the standard model given we have neutrino access. However, it would be exactly like the B2S gamma. You remember the previous gamma of this amplitude here? They are B in the center of because of the top mass, no? and because of this breaking of, of, uh, of the velocity because of the top mass. But here the neutral masses are miserable, so if you compute this at one loop in the neutral masses, you get something different from zero, but it's going to be practically zero. Okay? Right, the last thing I want to mention before going to, to the models. Because it was mentioned this morning by uh, sort of again the fact that if we give this to the electron sector, we have another operator. Uh, is that? So we have this other operator. Uh, that is the operator that contributes to the famous G minus 2. Okay? So again, this is a dimension 6 operator, so I mean, it's, it's in this. List here. And uh, you know, is, uh, by the, a, 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 the precision of which the G minus 2 is measured, but what the precision is this, this operator run it down to energy is measured. And here we have all the issue of QED correction, which is a very important song. Uh, it's such that uh, okay, we still get a bounce here. Or you can even say that data are consistent with the positive elements of a coupling different from zero here. And so you see the situation which is the scale. Okay. But I don't know exactly what happens, but I don't remember exactly the number if it's just one. But I can tell you the following. If I put here y mu, okay, so the mu on the color coupling, which is something sounds easy to do, but of the mu on the color coupling, then Okay, defining the coupling this way, so with the C 
we fix to, 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 to one, okay? But just clicking the new and you copy, then we find that this key from, from uh, this anomaly, it's around one to D. The data consists a little bit with the positive evidence in the scale, not two. See that this is uh, actually, if I don't put the new one, then I get a much, much higher scale. This is the new universe, it's very small. Okay. So, is, uh, I want to mention this, but maybe at the end there will be no evidence. Okay, so we will set the bound. But you see that the bound we set here, once we put the new Yukawa coupling, it's a very natural bound. So that is again related to this idea that, okay, this is an operator that uh, do not break flavor, strictly speaking, as this is the new one, the new one, but it, it breaks the, as you tell it to the end symmetry that I told you, because the couple of right and left. Okay, so, if the machine is controlled by the new you have a copy, then we are in business. You will get something of the other So this is the idea. You say that this is reason for the part of the only material violation. Yes, this is, but not only there, in many models, I mean, the, the idea in all models where we have a link, okay, you see, you, you, you are anticipating what I want to say. So we, we, are, we want to find the link between the breaking of the flavor symmetry. Sorry. So we have our standard model of random, then we have <laughs> so we can consider only as a dimension six operator. So here we know that we have this SU3 to the fifth symmetry that is broken by the number okay? And here we know that the SU3 Breaking has to be small. Okay. So, to hear the DS, try to find it. There is not only one way, okay? Maybe I will discuss at least three different options which have pros and cons, okay? Which are the case. So, but this is the idea that we really, I mean, flavor physics is all about, like, if you take this bottom up approach, flavor physics is all about how we break this flavor okay? synthesis. Okay, so let's start. Yes, let me, let's start with a simple case, okay? And, I think the idea is really try to find a, a rational also for the new color okay? And also, the, 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 second, the first case we saw it, is the first case. That is the case of the so called flip programmings and mechanism of only one flip of signal. So, let me recall, let me recall you what uh, we shall the structure of the new color cabinet. So you can come up with the app, if you see it, we can write it in this case. This is the end. But this is uh, parametrically and this structure, one, 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 lambda, lambda, lambda two, lambda squared. Okay. And this is these are the eigenvalues, but if you look at the eigenvalues, roughly speaking, okay, so we find this approximate expansion of the city matrix in power of the capital Y. Okay, Here also, if you look at the eigenvalues, they are roughly of this size, lambda instance of. Experimental value of the sharp mass and the, and, the, and the up mass relative to the, to the top mass, you find this side of it. And if we look at the down, okay, let me look in the basis, so here yeah, I'm going in the basis where this is the Yapana, and then what I have is uh, it's. Uh, Which here is less than answer than the upside of the then signal. Okay, so the first thing that people thought about, well, even there are all these powers of lambda, 
what, how we can justify the dynamic. Well, the simplest thing is just to assume that there is a, a human symmetry, okay? And so that the values course in the different human chapters, okay? And so all these lambda correspond to the powers of the inception of some field that breaks this human symmetry. Okay? Maybe it's a, it's a very natural, very elegant approach. So that is the idea that so when we write down the certain master, okay, uh, uh, for the case of the of the app, okay, it can be certain charges to this different label, then I have to the charges with the, with the other things, and so let me put some factor here, which is the, the, the power breaking of, 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 uh, of this U1 symmetry. So let's give charges to I to the, to the anti dependent field and charges let me call them to left I and to U K. Uh, and so here I need epsilon to the and then I, I give I introduce a fundamental field theta that has charge minus one, okay? And then I define epsilon has the value distribution value of theta divided by the scale of the label, which I don't know what it is. Suppose for that this is a scalar field, so then this is a dimensional parameter, then, then I have to put it here to power to compensate this charge, which is so uh, <coughs> Okay, okay. So clearly, in the that this is a small parameter, it gets a suppression, the more I have charges here. Okay? And so, uh, let's try the, the guess, okay? We want to reconstruct somehow this pattern here. It's convenient to give charge zero to the third generation, because this term I want to be allowed even without this epsilon. And clearly, finally, I can expect this to be over the lambda, okay, which is my expansion parameter. Okay. Then, I need to give charges to the left-handed field, okay, the different generation. And you get convinced of yourself very easily that uh, here the different charges in the left handed sector basically control this parametric expansion of the signal matrix, which just is a very unique in the left handed sector. So, very natural guess if epsilon is over the lambda, is going to have charge 2 for this and charge 3 for this one, because then the elixir between third and third generation is suppressed by 3 power, and the mind of this between the third and the second generation is suppressed by 2 powers. And then I'm forced somehow to have these other charges for the for the uh, up field, right hand up field, which are uh, well here I want to get four, so I put other two, and here I want to get eight, so I put that five. Okay. This is not the most nice model. Also, you see here the or the one parameter that you control is actually you want the coupling of these pieces here or the other one. So you can trade maybe one of these power cabibles with a with another one factor. But still, okay. If you do like this, it works very well. And if you do the same also for the down sector, uh, again, zero because you assume, okay, here this is just an accidental suppression. Maybe it's even more justified with this of two weeks. And here, what I have to put is just the, the charge of the D, which is uh, to gain one and uh, what I want to put here, uh, three. Okay? Now, I think this exercise which is really trivial, simple. So, take this. So, okay, so, what you understand? So, my, the idea is that my internal interaction. Has the following form. So, yeah, two 
is a sum of term of the type 2 by left i u i j in principle there was this theta field divided by lambda to the power 2 left plus 2 j so that this compensates the human charges okay so it's a very high dimensional operator okay then of course i also have the least to compensate the issue to charge but so finally this is when theta get a breath, this is my Yukawa Kappi, IJ. So now, compute the Yukawa Kappi with these, these charges, okay, and you will get something very similar, perfectly consistent with this charge. So this is fantastic, actually, it's a, it's a very good idea, and uh, we cannot even complete the school that is correct. And, uh, and you see, as, which are the, the, the two main advantages of the following. Right? First of all, I define the action, okay, for the smallest parameter. And if you, okay, and here you can also explain why the, why the neutrinos are not uh, very, very hierarchical, simply because if you look at the charges in the left hand, in the neutrino sector, you can put charges to the right handed electron fields and not, okay, all the same charge for the left handed electron field. Then the neutrino mass matrix is just left hand. Not the, the, and then there is a big suppression because of the total electron amount. Okay? Just the head And then you get the hierarchical charge electron masses, but by the appropriate charge for the attended electrons. Okay? And you can add that even in a way which is complicated here. But this assignment is not really perfectly compatible with unification, because if I want to do unification, I have to. Give uh, the same assignment for things which are in the same uh, representation. But the trend is not that bad. There is a difference. This is 0, 0, 0, the third generation, second generation, 2, 2, 1. So, okay, maybe I can put here 2, and then there is an accidental factor which. And here also, these are all, I should put these uh, a little bit higher than this, uh, the half masses accidentally suppressed, but it fits really well. Okay, so it's a, it's a bad factor here. You also get a, a Naive prediction because you see that um, these charges in the left handed sector have been chosen to reproduce <coughs> the hierarchy here between the mixing with the third generation, and you get a, an automatic prediction that the mixing between the first and second generation is related to the difference between these two charges, which is just one. Okay? So this predicts. That uh, theta can equal it's a word than alpha. This is a non trivial prediction because, in principle, the three mixing angles in the, in the mixing matrix are all other. That would be in one zero or two different so They're both, and here I can fix only two relative mixing, then I prediction that the third mixing is related to the ratio of the other two. So, the fact that we observe that the mixing between one two is possible with the ratio between the mixing between two. Divided by the mixing of 3, 1 is a support for this idea. So it's, a, it's powerful. These are the good things, which is the, the bad things. But the bad things is now if I try to, and I, I can try to adopt this idea to see what happens for the less technical two operator, the one continues to be, and then you see immediately that. That does not work. Not that it doesn't does work completely, but that doesn't work enough. Okay? Because now if I consider this operator, okay, I'm suppressed by a scale, but then, okay, the coefficient that we expect here is my epsilon to charge it. Well, here you see, actually, it goes even with the difference of the charge, so it's 2 left i minus 2 left j and then the square. So if I go to the one full generation, I get only one power of capital angle suppression squared. While in the same model I have 10 power of capital angle. So clearly I don't get enough suppression of the two different capital. This is why this model has problems. So we find a very nice rational explanation for the structure of the capital. 
to trade the New York Economy with a series of chapters. So you can discuss if this is a economical or not, but it's, I think it's better. Okay? It's nicer than just putting 10 to minus 5 entries. However, the disadvantage is that uh, uh, the suppression function is not so what's that? Uh, let me conclude with that. So what, what we have done? Okay, so clearly the initial symmetry when I said all masses to zero and all the initial symmetry we discussed at many times is next to three to the Okay. So here I was not looking at this symmetry, but I was looking at a, a, a subgroup, just a U1 symmetry, this one, which is a, a very small subgroup of this symmetry here. Okay. So I thought I could do everything with just with this much smaller subgroup of this one. And unfortunately, of course, so the idea is to go to, to bigger groups, to probably not a bigger groups. Of course, I mean, one is a is a thing to go, and then the, the, the case of mean of evolution that you mentioned is really the opposite. Just to take this as the initial group and break it only with the Yukawa, then then you works in a sense of good suppression, but then you lose. All these nice explanations in the structure of the UK. So, maybe the good compromise is something in between. So, uh, this is what I will discuss uh, in the next sector. But clearly, the issue is really how we take uh, this uh, symbol. This or, which is the relevant subgroup uh, here. And of course, I mean, also, since uh, maybe you will see, we recent people say that uh, these global symmetries are totally. Uh, well, it could be. Okay. Uh, it's clear that here we are thinking an effective so we don't really this symmetry are in the fundamental theory of accidental symmetry, so we don't know. But clearly, in this bottom up approach are very useful tool to understand what's going on. Okay. They don't need to be fundamental symmetry, they can be the age or whatever. So. But I think still are very useful. Okay, stop here.